Hello everyone and welcome to another NetApp Cloud video. With this video, we would like to walk you through the NetApp Cloud Sync service. One of the best places to start for information is cloud.netapp.com. Here you can see the information on all our NetApp Cloud offerings and find out how Cloud Sync can make your data migration needs a very, very simple task. Cloud Sync can securely migrate your NFS and SIFS data to or from the cloud or help you migrate your data to and from your choice of storage platforms. Uh, this can aid with your tech refresh and your data center consolidation needs. But for now, we're simply going to dive right into our Cloud Sync service by clicking on the 14 day free trial button. This opens up a new browser tab for Cloud Sync. Here we can sign up and provide our basic information, password, company name, and so on. AWS GovCloud customers can click on this link to find out more information about how to use Cloud Sync with their GovCloud accounts. Once you're satisfied with your entries and agree to the end user license agreement, uh, click on sign up, then you'll be provided a place to specify the AWS account you want to associate with the Cloud Sync service. Since I'm already signed up, I'm just going to go ahead and log in. Once I've authenticated and logged in, I can see I already have a couple of Cloud Sync relationships. In the lower left hand corner, I can see a yellow banner showing me the information about my free trial and that I have a few days left. Clicking on this, I can see more information about my licensing configuration. If I want my relationships to stay alive after the free trial, uh, then I'm going to need to subscribe. If we click on subscribe, then we're taken into the AWS marketplace at aws.amazon.com marketplace for the Cloud Sync service. Here we can see more details about our Cloud Sync service and details about the 14 day free trial, pricing details for Cloud Sync, more information on resources and support. And to subscribe, we just need to click on continue. If this is the first time subscribing, then you'll get a confirmation saying that you have subscribed. And I can see that I'm already subscribed to the Cloud Sync service. Coming back to Cloud Sync, I wanna make sure that I point out our chat option in the lower right hand corner. This is where you can reach out to folks on the Cloud Sync team if you have any questions. Now let's go back and create a new synchronization relationship. And we simply click on the create relationship button here we can select our source and target systems. Source systems can be any NFS or SIFS server or an Amazon S3 bucket. Target systems can be any NFS or SIFS server, Amazon S3 or a storage grid web scale system if you want to use a private cloud object storage destination. And I can see that I can also use Cloud Sync to migrate directly from NFS to NFS if I want. It's also possible to migrate directly from SIFS to SIFS, but for this demo, I'm just going to select the NFS server as the source and Amazon S3 as the target. And continue. Now we select the NFS server, so I can type in the IP address or the fully qualified name here, or select an NFS server Cloud Sync already knows about. And now a data broker. I see that I already have one data broker here, and I can select to use this one, or I can also delete it. Um, that will just remove the data broker, basically the engine that helps transport the data, but will leave all the data in place on the source and the target. If this is your first time using Cloud Sync, then you'll have to create a data broker. You can do so by clicking on the plus sign in the upper right corner uh, to add a new data broker. And we see we have a choice of where to launch our data broker, either in our AWS account or on-premises. And I'm going to select to launch in my AWS account. We have to give the data broker a name. So something like AWS data broker and hit enter. Now this is taking me directly into the AWS console for cloud formation templates. And since I'm already logged into the AWS console, I'm taken directly in. And if you weren't logged in already, you'll be prompted to do so. Here we mainly need to just accept the defaults. We can see that the data broker will be created from a stored S3 cloud formation template. Click on next. Here we can see the name we assigned, which is the name we selected. So that's AWS data broker. Now we just pick where we want the data broker launched. First, we do need to make sure we're in the region we want to use. Then we'll select the VPC or virtual private cloud and subnet for the AWS networking we'd like to use. Provide a key pair file and optionally identify any proxy server information you would like to use if you need to use a proxy. I don't need to use one, so I'm just going to go to the next step. Here we can optionally provide some tags for our data broker and optionally identify an IAM role. Now we simply review and create. Uh, before we do that, I do need to acknowledge that the CloudFormation template will create a custom role for the data broker so it can access my S3 buckets. And I'm going to do that and click on Create. 
Now we're still in the CloudFormation service, so if we want to see what's going on, we'll need to refresh the view and see our new CloudFormation stack. And that's really it. You know, in roughly five or six minutes, our new data broker will be ready. If we go back to CloudSync, we can see that our new data broker will be grayed out until it's up and available. And let's give that a couple of minutes to finish launching. Okay, we see that our new data broker is now available, so let's go and use it. The next step in recreating our relationship is to select which directory we want to synchronize. But before we do that, let's take a look at what this exclusion timeframe is. Opening that up, we see we can select to exclude some files from the sync relationship. This is to help avoid copying partial changes for files that change rapidly. You can select your exclusion timeframe, so the default is 30 seconds, or you can simply turn this off. We'll stick with the defaults for this example. Now let's select our file system. I see that I have uh, the first one here, a new volume file system. If I dive into that, I can see the subdirectories. And let's go and select uh, the sync one directory for us to synchronize. Now we have to select our S3 bucket that we want to use as the target. So diving in here, we can go and create a new destination folder. So let's do that and let's call it demo folder two. And since we're using S3 as the target, we can optionally provide the object tags for S3. So let's go and do that and put in something like purpose, which is this demo. And let's add another one. So owner and Kevin. Okay, now review, confirm our source and destination and so on, and then click on create relationship. So the data I'm synchronizing is roughly 40 gigabytes of data with over 100,000 objects. And this will transfer pretty quickly, but let's go look at some of the details in our dashboard. Going to our dashboard, we can see that once we have data in our S3 buckets, we can use a wide variety of AWS services against that data in our S3 buckets. If we look at our new relationship, we can see that we've already processed several thousand objects. You can also look at the sync relationship in a list view if you like. Uh, you can get the same sort of information by hovering over the information icon. And you can also select to delete your relationships if you want. And this will only delete the relationship, not the data that's been synchronized. So I don't want to delete this relationship, so I'm going to cancel. And we also have the ability to change the sync schedule, either turning it off or changing how frequently CloudSync will synchronize your data. The default schedule is once a day. You can also see what tags have been identified for each sync relationship. And we can see that our sync relationship is still moving along just fine. So we'll give that a couple of minutes to finish and come back when it's done. Okay, our sync relationship is done. You know, we have a status here to show that it took roughly 20 minutes to go ahead and synchronize our 39 gigabytes and over 111,000 objects. So CloudSync can also provide you a timeline uh, as a log to view the actions taken in CloudSync. And all of the actions in CloudSync are based off its APIs, which means it's fully automatable. So simply click on the API options on the bottom banner for more information. That's all we wanted to show you for this video. We hope you found it helpful. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.